Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on LeeChess.org, and I just got paired up playing a 15-2 game. So, let's see, what to do against e4? How about we try... Oh... d6. That's different. Alright. And... Let's try e5 right away. So, this is an invite to a queenless middle game. Let's see if we have that now. Okay. So I'm just going to take, and let's see how white recaptures. Ah, with the queen. So at some point I could gain a valuable tempo against the queen with knight c6. However, I'm not sure I want to go in for that right away. No, let's hold off. Let's go with knight f6. I'd like to see this bishop move somewhere other than b5 right away. I'm expecting knight c6, bishop b5 would be played. So, I mean, if it goes to c4, then maybe I'm more inclined to play knight c6. Should the pin occur then, then, well, some time was wasted by white. Okay. So let's still hold off. I'm not going to go with the uh, kingside fiend keto. So bishop e7 it is. So let's see what I'm the best is doing. All right. I'm assuming there is some queenside castle idea being prepped. Okay. Let's castle. Queenside castle or not. Now I could play this soon and there won't be a pin. Do I want to do that? I also have to be pretty careful. This rook is opposite my queen. So, uh, first things first. This is a pretty half open position. I think knight c6 has its place now. That was played pretty quick. Queen to d2. Hmm. Okay. Well, one of my thoughts is that if I play h6, there might be some sacrifice there. A bit concerning. Uh, I could also consider just some development. Bishop to e6. Let's consider something, though. We are castled on opposite wings, and so should I be looking forward to expanding on the queen side with a6, b5, rattling the knight position? And maybe not such an important thing to, uh, well, forget about important, maybe it's just a bad idea altogether. Not only might there be a sacrifice, but I'm giving my opponent something to bite at. The G pawn advance. I don't want files to open towards my king. So, forget about h6. And maybe forget about bishop here. Mm, let's consider. a6 or bishop here. If I play a6 first, bishop here is going to run into some tempo moves with b5. I could maybe even still play bishop here if the bishop is on c4. Uh, I think what's most important is that I look to crack at their king position somehow. At the same time, I have to be mindful of e5. You know, this rook is still opposite my queen. You know, if the queen is uh, no longer in front of the rook, this can be a bit of an issue. So, let's see. I, an idea I could go with also is bishop to e6 instead of this kind of idea. Maybe get one more developing move in. And then I'm even in a spot to offer some exchanges. I am down space-wise. 
little bit of a space disadvantage here, e4 versus d6. I wouldn't be, you know, I shouldn't be so shy to exchange uh, some pieces. Bishop to e6 with then knight to d7 is a way to offer dark square bishop exchange. If I'm going to move this knight, I need some coverage on d5. So bishop e6 would provide that type of coverage. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards bishop to e6. Yeah, let's go with bishop to e6. It's developing after all. And let's see. Will there be some type of uh, caveman idea? h4, who knows, maybe even g4 as a gambit to open up the g file. Anything's possible here. Material, not so much, well, not, not nearly as important as uh, having open files towards the enemy king. So you can see this type of, uh, at least on the surface, it may appear to be a bit outlandish, g4, where there's a couple different pieces that could take. But uh, that allows some direct pressure against the heart of my kingside structure, g7. So I'm happy to see that they're thinking. So let's see what they come up with. Will it be a light square bishop move, knight to d5? This I have covered. A queen move. Preparing this, I could scoop my queen over to c8. Just to get out of this, this is another benefit, we might say, of playing bishop to e6. I have this square open for my queen. Knights. We all have all good knights. All four knights are in that sweet spot in the chessboard. Those key 16 squares where they have a maximum number of moves. What to do? If white does nothing, I think this is my idea, to kind of just get rolling here some on the queen side. Hmm. What more? King to b1? It's usually a pretty common move to see after queenside castle. I don't know if it's really so important to do right now. Just to uh, cover a2, this this might have uh, this might be capturing White's attention some because I do have pressure here after all. I'm only realizing that now, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Queenside Castle, King b1, pretty typical. Hmm. What more? Um, sometimes you'll see Rook to e8, although. Because I decided to post up on e6 with my bishop, I don't see that this is uh, such a good idea, at least right now. There's too much traffic on the e-file for this rook to really have uh, some influence. Not, not uh, enough direct pressure on e4 with this rook e8 move. It is a half-open file. At some point it may, it may hit, it may be relevant. But I'm not seeing it as such right now. Hmm. They're stunned. Trying to come up with the plan. May not be a bad idea to have my knight on c5. Offering the exchange. A knight on c5. Drifting towards the, the queen side here. Some pressure against the pawn. Uh, this may this may still be an idea. Rook to e8. Yeah. I want to I want to shy away from h6. Done with that. It'd be it'd be different. Well, it'd be different if they were castled kingside. H6 is certainly something. But um, you know, this isn't so much of a bother to me. It's not like uh, my bishop is outside here and my knight on f6 can't move. The bishop is breaking any type of pin against my knight. So, after blitzing out the first eight moves, 
The move nine is where I'm the best. Ten is in the think tank. Sometimes there could be some uh, tactical opportunities for black with, um, you know, if h6 and then the bishop goes to h4, there are uh, some ideas with knight takes e4. And if bishop takes bishop, there could be knight takes knight first with check. This may be a reason in some situations uh, to, let's say, not have the king on b1. But again, I don't know if uh, this h6 move is something I would really like to do in an opposite sides castling type position. Hmm. I wonder if they have it. No, they're they're still here. Their connection appears to be fine. This is quite a think. It's certainly a position where you have to come up with some type of plan. So let's see what that plan is. Maybe they do have a connection thing, and these very words I'm sharing right now will go unheard <laughs> you just uh i won't be uploading this we'll see am i just talking to myself right now it may be the case that these very words are ones that i only hear <laughs> oh, i'm running out of things to say this is what happens oh there we go i was ready to say this is what happens when too much time is spent by my opponent, no, well, not too much time, but anyhow, they're here. They're live. They made a move. They developed. And my first impression is that it's a bit on the slow side. It's uh, kind of chalk it up as uh, a bit of a half-developing move. It is off the back rank. It is maybe preparing to play rook here and blast open the center. Okay, so I guess these words will be heard, after all. Uh, my opponent is here. Um, well, I am leaning towards a6, b5. And the threat of b4 is, uh, is something. As he is the only defender of e4. I'm gonna go with it. A6 it is. Rook A to E1, or will there be another thing here? Let's see. We both have uh, really good structures. This is a position where I look into piece placement quite a bit. Uh, also, the number one thing really is uh, king safety. Castled on opposite wings, I would really like to see the B or A file open up. All right, I guess they're preparing G4. It's the only other move. However, no, maybe I'm off with that. There may be another idea behind H3, and that is to secure a queen position on E3. Yeah. It could be that G4 is lined up, but I think right around this moment they're sensing e4 will need some support. So, in other words, if I play b5, I'm expecting queen e3. So that if I give the knight a boot, the knight can move. Hmm. I think I should still go with b5. And... Or... Hang on for a moment. I wonder if I should hold off on that right around this point. I'm I'm actually considering rook to e8. Because on b5, queen e3, I have to be on the lookout for e5. I could kind of force the action. I, I could play b4. But I think white would be perfectly fine with playing knight to d5. I have enough support for it. And if I'm taking with the knight, then I end up in a fork. 
If I take with the bishop, pawn takes, where is he going to go? I think right around this point, I, I want to have my rook on e8. I think uh, a rook on e8 will uh, make the white queen not feel as safe on e3. So rook e8, queen e3, maybe then knight d7. Really uh, combating this e5 advance and also breaking some, making it a little bit more indirect, uh, you know, the white rook doesn't have as direct sight with my queen anymore, with my knight on d7. So maybe rook e8 is, a, is an idea. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder, rook to e8. Now this knight cannot yet just jump right in there. Let's play rook e8. Yeah, I have knight to d7, offering some exchanges. Maybe soon I have this b5 move hitting. We'll see. Oh, g4 it is. All right, I think I want to get on with b5. Let's let's start some action here on the queen side. Did something uh, quite similar here. We both have our Rook pawns up a step, our knight pawns up a couple steps. Okay. This is a hole, so I don't really see a way to take advantage of that. This might also be a way to post up on f5. Huh. With this kind of fancy stuff. I wonder, but b b4 is something, you know? Uh... I was mentioning earlier white has some space advantage, e4 versus d6 in the center. At the same time, it's the e4 pawn that is a bit more vulnerable, right? I have some pressure on it. This is something. This will force uh, force the issue. White has to react to this type of pressure against e4. Let's see. 11 moves in. White has support for a piece on this square, and the most invasive piece around would be a knight. Kind of view this f5 square and f4 squares against king positions on the king side. These spots here for knights are fantastic. A couple different checking squares for the knight. Super invasive piece, one that strikes right at the heart of uh, the king structures, or the king positions again. The white king was over here. Strong's post for the knights. For me, maybe a knight on c4 would be quite good. I'm not sure in this position, but just generally speaking, a knight on uh, just looking at corresponding squares. These would be the key squares for the knights, depending on where the king positions are. Under six. My threat here is b4, and then knight takes e4. Winning a pawn. And really, you know, getting there with some, uh, how to say, some authority. Really hitting everything. So they've given up their dark square bishop. Well, I'm not taking with the pawn. No way. Got the bishop pair in a strong bishop. They don't have, um, this is a positional feature right now, but they don't have the, the greatest of harmony between their their bishop and remaining structure. So this dark square I referenced earlier, f4 being a hole, this may factor in somehow. Okay. I could take. Uh, do I want to do that? If I take, he's going to have to find a new home. I think white would like to have a knight exchange. You know, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight here, knight takes, bishop takes, f4. You know, 
There's now three pawns creeping towards my king. I have to come up with something here. Can I just work around this guy? Must I work around him? Hmm. Huh. To do here. Hmm. I'm lacking a plan. I'm not sure what to do here. Bishop takes knight, pawn takes... I don't really have a good square. These are done. It's the only square here. Maybe I have to take with the pawn? Ooh, well, that might not be a bad idea, actually. Oh, yeah, that is an idea. It's, uh... Yeah, I, I initially I didn't want to do something like that because it blocks my bishop's sight along this diagonal, but maybe that's only temporary. Bishop takes, pawn takes, knight here. And if knight takes knight, I take with the pawn. If bishop here, I play e4. You know, I wouldn't want this bishop to have direct sight here, but let's consider. Bishop takes, pawn takes, knight here, knight takes, pawn takes. I'm also then threatening bishop here, winning the queen, so I would be expecting h4, but maybe right around that point, it's simplified enough where I can actually, I can actually go pawn grabbing, and maybe I will, in fact, just take that pawn. Um, opposite color bishop type position, still both of us with all major pieces. I think I will take that pawn if that happens. I think I'm going to go with this. Bishop takes pawn. However, let me consider one more thing, and that is the queen can take on bishop takes pawn. Huh. Well, I could still jump in here. Yeah, I'll have some options. Knight to b4, maybe. But I, I think I want to get rid of this guy. He's strong. He's probably worth his position. Uh, well, he probably is just as good as a bishop on d5. He is in my in my uh, house, let's say. Okay. Knight e5 it is. Moving forward. There's no in-betweener. G5's not working. I get to take, and I'm on the queen. Yeah, I, I need to be taking with the pawn. And then, actually, this this square, in fact, plays a role in this uh, game. This uh, weakened f4 square. And uh, the rook on e8 is certainly a useful piece. Knight takes, pawn takes. It's important that I have the move e4 and reply to bishop d3 now. Otherwise, there can be some uh, a nice blockade here. Now that, if I'm not mistaken, is losing. No. Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop here. There's an in-between move with rook takes, rook. Boy, that is close to working, though, isn't it? Uh, what I could do, though is focus my sights on the f4 square still. Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop e5, with then queen f6, or maybe first a rook exchange and then bishop to e5. I think my bishop is playing and their, their bishop is not playing in this ending. Opposite color bishops. I think I want to take the knight. 222. Um, hmm, feels like g5 would be played at some point. Should I be capturing the knight and then playing h6? No, then the bishop moves and then the f4 is getting in. I want to control f4. If I can control f4, I think I can control the game. Knight takes knight, bishop takes, bishop e5, g5. Knight takes, knight, bishop takes, rook takes. I don't know if that's really helping me. 
Hmm. Something other than knight takes knight here? Start with h5? No, I don't want this to happen. Let's start with the knight takes. Now, bishop here, there's rook takes rook first. Unfortunately. I could insist on camping out here. Um... Oh, what am I talking about? I could play rook takes rook and then do this first. The queen has to recapture on this. Otherwise, this is winning. Queen has to take. Ah, oh, okay. But now I don't know that I even want to play bishop here. I think I just play here. Super glue my bishop on e5. And follow up with queen f6. And there's a very strong control over the whole position now. Also, I had a tactic that I could have gone for. <laughs> yeah, I could have captured the pawn straight away and then followed up with this, but even so, I think playing a balanced, you know, not uh, investing my bishop for this pawn is still still a good position for me here. But uh, yeah, I should have been, I should have considered something f far more direct here. I could have captured on G uh, b2 and then followed up with a fork. But uh, maybe even preferring this, because my bishop is not allowing this type of entry into my position. This is a potential target. Maybe, well, maybe now I just win a pawn straight away. And keep the dark square bishops on. Yeah, this is a problem now. I'm striking at b2 and the bishop. Uh, I know the type of flight square I want. g6, dark square. What is vulnerable within my own position? This guy. But uh, maybe he's not even a factor. Maybe I just don't even care about him. If he's captured, so what? Uh, how is this... Uh, really helpful to these guys. I mean, this is I have really good control over this position now. This pawn doesn't uh, factor in so much. And as it stands right now, I'm ready to rip the heart out of uh, the, the structure here. As soon as he's gone, dark square weaknesses everywhere. Normally this would be the structure white would like to have, but uh, even that can be broken down with b4. This is a big problem. This is the most uh, serious issue here. Maybe this is a try with bishop takes pawn and then trying to kick my queen away from defense of the bishop. I think they have to try for a queen exchange here. Rook there. Just grab that pawn. No back rank issues. Bishop takes b2? I guess so. On c3, I have. Uh, on the move c3, I have bishop a3. Oh my goodness. I really just missed that simple idea. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I just missed that. What a serious brain cramp. I'm losing my bishop. Oh, brother. That is so bad. And so basic. No good. Oh, man. I feel like resigning. Oh, my goodness, that was so basic. Oh, man. Bishop takes pawn. I was only looking at this. I was just pointing out this move earlier if the queen made a move. Uh, I'll play it out a little bit more. It sure would be nice to have uh, the dark square bishop still around. Ugh. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. Uh, rook to e3, queen here. Not cool at all. Ugh. It's tough to play on after a mistake like that, I must say. Really, really tough.
Now this is an important pawn. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. What to do? I still need a flight square. Maybe they give me the piece back and blunder. Very unlikely. Rook there. Push, push. Maybe I could sneak in here. Uh awful, awful, awful. I guess here. I still need a flight square. If they go after something like this, maybe then there's that tactic. Maybe I could try to put some pressure clockwise on them. Let's get that flight square in there. They are under a minute. These guys do uh, control some light squares from the bishop. Let's see. Need to keep the queens on. Three seconds is not a lot. Is it ever? If the bishop moves, I could grab that f2 pawn. It's a very good spot for the queen, just patrolling the dark squares. Four seconds. I think I want to play uh, <clears throat> h5. Maybe pick him off at some point. Don't know a good spot for my king. I guess king h7? It could be bishop takes pawn here at some point. Maybe even right away. They're under 10 seconds. Bishop on d3, I guess. Well, let's come back over here. A little, a little floundering action. I need some defense over here. This is unprotected. I think I need to go with the queen trade. Fortunately. Oh my goodness. They just dropped on time. Oh man, what to say? Mm. Well, I liked how I played it until I grabbed the pawn and played g6, and then I'm losing. <laughs> what more to say? I mean, that was so... I can't explain it. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Clearly losing this ending. There is no fear of their own king position now. Yeah. I don't know. I shouldn't have captured that pawn. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. There we see. The blunder. Rook d3 grabbing the pawn is losing. What more to go over? Let's see. Yep, we have a, huh, one of them. Okay, e4, d6, and d4. You know, Philidor exchange variation. Don't be like that player. Okay, yeah, it's true, I was lucky. But, uh, yeah. Alright, so... Opposite sides castling, I think I got to share a lot. I mean, right around this point, I was uh, even saying that uh, many of these words might even be go, on, uh, go unheard. My opponent was in the think tank. Um, but, uh, yeah, my delay with knight to c6, sometimes, let me just point out, and I didn't get to share this during the game, sometimes uh, there is an option for knight a6 into c5, although this is something that springs about a, a bit more, I believe, when we have same sides castling type positions. I'm pointing this out because an idea can be to converge on the e4 square. You know? Um, so, there's a reason to 
maintain some flexibility with uh, the queen knight. Okay. So, go with this. Um, yeah, it's pretty even. I mean, the 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 graph is saying quite a bit. It's just a pretty even position until, I guess, a slight drop with bishop e2. Yeah, the move that I thought was a bit uh, of the passing type, uh, half-developing type. It's just even. We get some pawns rolling. And then there's that drop off with. Well, at what point is there a drop off? Bishop takes f6. Yeah, b5, bishop takes f6. So maybe something other than giving up the bishop for knight. Because from there I'm slightly better. And then I blunder. But it's, it's one that's. Man, I mean, if I'm not blundering that bishop, white has their work cut out for him. You know, this position right here, exchanging rooks first, again, going in for this right away is losing because my queen is kicked from the bishop's defense. So I see that kind of tactic, right? <laughs> Not something like just g5 after I take here. Not that that one's sophisticated that I just highlighted, but anyhow, some serious brain, camp, brain cramp situation going on with capturing on b2. This is a position that I have excellent control in, and the, the evaluation, let me just put it on right around this point, is maybe a bit misleading, because this is, it's only saying negative 0.4, but um, this is one that you can see growing, uh, just as you start playing out a bit more in, in, in this position. I have good control of these dark squares. If we just key in on the main difference between these bishops, he's without question, relevant, my dark square bishop, whereas the light square bishop really doesn't have a say or isn't really felt in this position at all. I have good control over these pawn advances. Um, I have good dark square control over here. I'll be playing g6. Again, their light square bishop isn't felt in this position. Mine certainly is. There is some coordinated effort against b2. So I shouldn't be capturing here. What I should be doing is something like g6. Uh, the computer is pointing out um, no, a5. Let me let me put the arrows on. Uh, it's pointing out a5. Yeah, just advancing. Although this would certainly be a candidate as well, just getting in a flight square. Although, as we're seeing, uh, there's an, an additional reason to be playing a5. It kills queen a5 idea. So a5 first and then some nice strength and you move with g6 yes g6 rook to g3 but i still have this idea now now i have to do something about this threat there's b4 maybe you could even prep it first with rook to b8 you know wants to go with b4 right away takes we're just taking and these dark squares are collapsing uh, material is not as big a factor in these opposite color bishop positions it's really who can better activate their bishop and uh, it's team black who's able to do that here um, I'd like to just what is a clean approach for white just winning this uh, I think how they did it is fine getting their queen active it was just a time thing uh, yeah they could capture here and that's what I suspected because of this rook g3 idea and, yeah, I'm going to be losing my queen, I think. Well, he's certainly running for the hills. Yep, there goes my queen. So, this was the right idea. My opponent uh, played it well. It just uh, lost on time. And that was the only thing I had to try for towards the end. If they banked some more time in that ending, I was just going to throw in the towel. But, uh, yeah, they had the right idea. Everything that they did was fine with... Uh, you know, once they had that bishop advantage, h4. If I'm not playing h5 myself, then this starts to become an issue, some mate threat on g7. So they played they played it well. It just uh, lost on time at the end. Um, yeah, no issues with how they played it here. Um, what more to say? 
let me just skim this early part, see if there's, well, there wasn't anything missed. We can see that from the evaluation or the graph. But, uh, yeah. Interesting opening. It's uh, solid. It's been around for <laughs> quite some time. The Philidor defense, exchange variation. Mm. Opposite sides castling. We're trying to get at one another's king. Yeah, I think I really did get to share everything that I wanted to during the game, so tight one, for sure. I need to stay clear of that little capture on B2. Oh, right here, even. Right here, I could have captured. But it doesn't like that as... No, I couldn't have captured, excuse me. Bishop takes pawn, king takes on a queen check. There's queen C3 defending the bishop and blocking the check. So I was wrong to think that this was a move. This would be some more poor calculation on my part to go in for that. But uh, le le even <laughs> if if I didn't s still see this as a move right here, I think this is something I would maybe even still shy away from in a way. Like, I'm giving a great value to the bishop on e5. Um Coupled with queen f6, it's just, as mentioned, really good control over the dark squares and really the whole position. Uh, exerts pressure against their king and has good control over any ensuing pawn advance on the king's side. So, okay, well, got away with one there in the end. But, uh, yeah, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. And as always, I hope you got something out of it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.